Hi, everyone, and welcome to El Camino People, the podcast. Today, I'm, of course, with coffee because there's no Camino Café without café. So how are you doing, Leigh? It's so nice to have you here. Oh, thank you, Jose. I am so happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me to be a part of this. It's great. How does it feel to be on the other side of the of the interview? <laughs> well, you know, it's a little harder to be the one that's being interviewed. Uh, I think it's easier because you feel really in control when you're the one asking the questions, right? And so you never know what someone's going to ask you. So it's a little bit harder, I think, on this side. But um, yeah, I, I always love talking about the Camino. I don't know one pilgrim that doesn't. So, mm -hmm. you know. That's okay. I think, I think that's the beauty on why, you know, they're they're growing the the more people that talk about the, the Camino in any way, you know, I don't care if it's YouTube, Facebook, a podcast, a book, the more we talk about the Camino, I, I believe that there's Camino for everyone. There is enough Caminos and I don't think there is going to be a massification. Everyone is going to find their own Camino. So, and if there's need for the Camino, why not, you know, let's just spread the joy. Exactly. Exactly. I always feel like every time I get ready to be interviewed or I do an interview, You know, I'm always looking at it through the lens of if, you know, if this time that we spend together inspires one person to come and walk, then mm -hmm. it's, worth, it's worth every bit of time that we spend on it. Totally. And also, it's so, you know, I'm like at the end, as I was talking with today, so I'm grateful because at the end, we are the ones that remember the Camino every time we interview someone, we review, we relieve the Camino. And it's so nice at the end. I'm like, I am saying, you know, I'm doing this for other people to find the joy in the Camino, but at the end, it's also for me to remind myself, you know, what the Camino looks like and how to give that Camino style on a normal day, because at the end, that's the hardest. And I think that's why we all go back to the Camino or little Camino battery gets trained. And then it's like, okay, one more Camino. We fill it up and then we can go back to normal life. Yeah, I totally agree. And that's really how my podcast came to be is that last year when the lockdown started, I didn't want to lose my Camino essence. You know, I had all the <laughs> spirit. I was so excited about it. And, you know, I just started this little Facebook community with my best friend and business partner. And uh, at that point, we had no idea what we were even doing or where this was going to go, you know. But it's been the main thing that's really gotten me through this past year is really staying connected and building community with other pilgrims. And I kind of laugh now because I, I had all these Caminos planned for 2020. <laughs> And when the lockdown happened, I thought, well, now I'm not going to meet any pilgrims. But in actuality, I have made so many pilgrim friends not even being on the Camino during this time of year. <laughs> and now I have all these people that I actually want to meet in Spain when I go. And uh, you know, lots of people from all over around the world that I've been talking to that I hope that I get to walk with them. So it's, it's so true, you know, uh, I think the same, like the, the COVID has bring something positive. I don't think it's the COVID, it's just the people that through COVID, you know, we have created this network of Camino freaks that, you know, in so many ways we've been in them connecting, then you ask someone, then I ask someone, then you meet someone else. It is just the Camino puts you in front of whatever you need or whoever you need in the moment. And for me, it's been the same, you know, I was supposed to go to the Manocodo, I was going to go to Italy to the Via Lauretana and everything got on hold, but I'm like, In a way, that's what I try to explain to people. You know, the Camino is not just walking the Camino. It's what happened in between the Caminos and what happened in normal life. You can be walking the Camino. And I always said, you know, with this podcast, we are doing Camino also. So, yes, I agree. So anyway, let me remind everyone that you have to like and subscribe both El Camino People and the Camino Cafe because, you know, the more likes, the more people, the more Camino people that will get engaged and the more people that will discover the joy that we both found in the Camino and that we do every day when we're talking about the Camino. But before we get into business, you know that the rite of passage for every pilgrim coming to the Camino People podcast is the one minute questionnaire. We have right. 40 questions. No one has ever been able to finish the whole set because okay. it's only one minute. So, okay. you know, one minute, a little questionnaire right. that you have to complete. Everything is Camino related. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Your first Camino. 2019. Princess. How many caminos? One. Ultrella or Susella? Mm, Susella. One city. Santiago. One meal. Tortilla Española. A song. 500 miles. One stage of the way. Mm, Otebrero. A sad moment. A, I'm sorry? A sad moment. Ah, sad moment. Uh, heartbreak. Anytime your heart's broken. A happy moment. 
Love when you fall in love. One color. Green. Canteen or camelback? Oh, camelback. Uh, coffee with milk or espresso? Both. Apple or Android? Hmm? Apple or Android? Apple. Oh, Apple for sure. <laughs> One hour to start walking. Um, stretching, doing yoga. Perfect. You did pretty good. You can tell <laughs> you have it prepared a little bit. You know. <laughs> Uh, so tell us a little bit how did you find out about the Camino what was the first time that you discovered there was something so marvelous in Spain that was the Camino de Santiago mm. uh, the very first exposure I had to it of course was the movie The Way with Martin Sheen and I know a lot of people say that but that really was how I first found mm. out about it and uh, I just loved everything about that movie and at that moment I, I knew it was something I was going to have to do And I always thought at that point, it would be something that my husband and I would do, my former husband and I would do sometime in retirement. And so I just kind of put it in the back of my mind and, and let it go. And then a couple of years later, I was working at uh, a gym in my local town. And one of my students that took spinning cycling classes with me, she went on the Camino. And when she came back, I saw this transformation in her that was just pretty amazing. I mean, she changed everything in her entire life. And I, again, I'm like, okay, that's something I'm going to have to do someday, you know, in retirement. And so a few years later, um, my marriage broke up and I was devastated, heartbroken. And one night, one of my girlfriends took me out to dinner and we were just kind of talking about bucket list items, you know, trying to... Mm -hmm. She was trying to cheer me up, you know, and so we were talking about things we've always wanted to do. And I said, you know, something I've always wanted to do. I want to walk the Camino. And she says, well, that's so funny. She said, one of my friends who's a therapist out in California has started this tour group where she's taking women. And then she just stops and she goes, how have I not told you about this? <laughs> and she says, she's taking a group of women that are going through hard life changes. That's exactly you. You know, you're trying to recover from this divorce. And so She gives me Pam's number and I call Pam that night and I signed up that night and um, I almost canceled four times because I always envisioned that my Camino was going to be the celebratory type of walk, right? That it was going to be mm -hmm. my husband and I walking as empty nesters and just, you know, vacationing, loving life in Spain. I never intended that I would walk it with a broken heart and that I'd be walking it to try to recover. But, um, so I almost canceled four times because I'm like, do I really want to spend all this money and, and go do this and be crying all the time? <laughs> and now I just laugh because it's like, uh, yeah, absolutely you want to do that, right? That's the reason you go. That's the whole point, man. Right? Um, so I think, you know, the Camino knows, the Camino always knows the seed is planted when it's planted, mm -hmm. right? And you go when it's the right time. And it was absolutely the right time for me. Yeah, it's truly, uh, I do believe that, you know, the Cam you don't decide to do the Camino, the Camino calls you and then you just have to go. Right. right. So you watch the movie, you get this friend and suddenly you are on your way to the Camino de Santiago. Did you yeah. plan for everything? Did you, how was the pre-Camino? Um, my pre-Camino, I did train a lot as far as walking. I lived at the time in Utah, so I had a really nice advantage. All my walks were at altitude, and so oh, that was a great place to train. Little did I know, you know, what the terrain would be like and how similar in <laughs> some cases. Um, but otherwise, you know, I wouldn't say, you know, I was doing my yoga and, you know, doing all the physical things, but I was very knee-deep in heartbreak. So beyond that, I wasn't doing a lot of preparation. Um, The group that I went with, they did provide some guidance along the way as we were getting ready. And so they're like, you know, you should pack this, pack that. But I'm more of a person, I kind of just jump in and do things. I don't really like to plan. <laughs> uh, so, you know, the, the night before, I'm just kind of throwing everything in, making sure it fits in my backpack. And, um, you know, so that was probably my, my biggest part of my planning was just the walking and the yoga. And now that you know the Camino, you know, a lot of people, they believe, you know, that when you do the Camino, it has to be just yourself and group Camino, you know, something that is not a pilgrimage is not something. So now that, you know, you can see it from outside, what do you think about doing the Camino as a group or doing the Camino by yourself? What are the pros and cons from, from both, both options? 
Yeah, well, the first thing I would like to say is that I think that, you know, as a Camino community, we've got to be really open and give people the ability to do the Camino the way that they need to do it. Um, because, you know, not everybody can take off three months of work or, you know, not everyone's in a state. I was in no state probably to go by mm -hmm. myself at that point. Um, and I, I think we really need to be open to allowing people to experience the Camino as they need to, whether it be a few miles, whether it be, you know, many miles. It's, it's really up to mm -hmm. them. And, and I think they, they create the Camino and the Camino creates it back for them. But as far as going group and solo, uh, you know, one of the things for me, actually, when I signed up for this group, one of my biggest questions was, yeah, I don't know if I really want to walk with people every day. <laughs> I, I hike by myself and I, you know, because I like to be able to think, I like to be in nature. Mm -hmm. I like to be alone. And so I was assured right away that I would be given the choice. You know, I, I did not have to walk with these people every day. So that made me feel much better. So anyway, uh, for me personally, uh, each day I walked pretty much by myself and maybe I would pick an hour or two here that I might walk with somebody that was in my group, but I tended to walk more with people that I had just met on the Camino. So I did a variety every day. Um, but I would say for everyone, the Camino, I think becomes about the people that you meet and the family that you form while you're actually walking. The nice thing about going with a group is that you kind of have a ready-made group, right? And so mm -hmm. you have that group that maybe you're going to meet up with right away at dinner. But either way, that's going to happen. You know, whether you're going with a group or you're walking on your own, I think eventually at some point in your Camino, you begin forming a family that you're going to have dinner with, that you're going to sit down at a cafe, but then you're also meeting other people along the way. So I think that there's, I think you've got to really look at where you are in life and think about what would be best for you, what gives you the most courage to go and start it. And then once you're there, do what your heart is telling you to do. You know, if you need to walk by yourself that day, then walk by yourself. If you need to maybe support another pilgrim and talk with somebody uh, as you walk, whether it's your support or you're supporting them, I think do that. You know, the Camino, you got to go with an open heart that you might go and think that you're going for a particular reason and, and be thinking, well, I need this. I need this to happen. But I think on the Camino, you need to be really open to what the Camino gives you because the Camino actually understands what it is that you need and that will happen. So, um, you know, I think there's a lot of, I see a lot of things in the forums about, oh, you know, you got to carry your backpack. Mm -hmm. you gotta, <laughs> you got to do it a certain way or you're a plastic pilgrim. And I think that's a um, something we need to get out of, out of the, out of our even thinking and allow people to experience the Camino as they need and to let go of our judgment. I think, you know, when we walk the Camino, hopefully by the end, when you reach Santiago, you have released some of that judgment about what other people are doing and realize that it's about your journey and, um, reconnecting to yourself and to, um, you know, the universe, you know, what, what, whatever it is that you're called to do. But, um, yeah, so I just say, listen, listen to what's going to give you the courage to go. If a group gives you that courage to take that first step, then do it. Hmm. But if you're like, hey, no, I got to do the solo the whole way, then do that too. You know, it, it, it's really up to you. Yeah, I agree with you totally. You know, we have to, I think the first rule for the pilgrim is never judge because you don't know what the other one is going through. So I always say that it's better to go the Camino with a group than not going to the Camino. It's better to do 100K than doing nothing. It's better doing by bike than not doing it. So if just doing with a group will put the, the seed of doing the last just 100 will put the seed for you to one day do it. The most beautiful part that is doing a whole month Camino by yourself. But as you say, some people don't have the time some people don't have the courage and some people just can't so you know just take it one step at a time yes exactly and how was your camino was it what you expected or was something different because sometimes right now you know i think we also have too many expectations in the camino we watch the way we now have the tv show there's a new tv show coming out there's so many books that sometimes you know they put everything, as I said, you know, in a Cinderella way, everything's so beautiful at the end, the, the bright castle, you know, Cinderella running into Santiago. How was the, the, the Camino for you? Hmm. You know, I, 
I felt that I was up for the physical challenge. Uh, I think mostly because I've been training at altitude and so what really helped. Uh, so I felt really good about the physicality of it. I think what I didn't expect was uh, the emotions that would come up. And, you know, I would spend most mornings um, pretty much crying the first couple of hours. <laughs> uh, so, I, you know, just it was like this. You know, I believe very strongly that our emotions get trapped in our body. And so when you start doing a lot of walking, you really start processing a lot of stuff that's going on in your life, especially when you're walking solo and mm -hmm. you know, not listening to music, not doing it, yeah. you, know, you being out in nature. And, you know, if there's one thing I can say, no matter how you walk, make sure you get that time where you're just quiet and walking by yourself. Mm -hmm. So I was surprised about the emotion and, um, but it was really great. And then I would say I, one of the things I didn't expect was how many people I would meet that would give me the message that I needed to hear that very day. And it was the craziest thing. Like every single day I would meet someone that would, you know, they would just happen to come beside me. And all of a sudden next thing I know they'd be, it'd be this person that's gone through this horrible divorce. They're out on the other side of it. And they say something to me about it, not knowing at all anything about me. And that was so healing to, to hear that. And then the last thing I would say that, you know, what I didn't expect, I thought I was just kind of going to mm, get rid of my heartbreak a little bit. Right. What I didn't anticipate is that it would transform my entire life. You know, someone told me probably maybe one town before Santiago that, you know, they kind of looked at me and they said, y you know, right, like your pilgrimage isn't going to end in Santiago. And I didn't get it at the at that mm -hmm. moment. And I'm like, what are they talking about? Of course it ends there. you know. <laughs> um, but I think the biggest thing that surprised me is that it transformed my whole life. You know, I came home with this new sense of meaning. I came home with a new purpose. And I knew on the plane coming back that I was no longer going to go and teach yoga at a studio, that I needed to now make the Camino my life, and that I wanted to be involved with pilgrims on a daily basis. I didn't know exactly how that's going to look. I don't even know today exactly how that's going to look. But that's part of also, I think, the transformation is that now I'm open to, you know, people say to me, oh, you're going to move to Spain? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, what are you going to do? And I'm like, I don't know, but here's I what I know. You know, here's what I think is gonna. Here's what I'm gonna start with, and you know, we'll see. And I think I've, I'm starting to learn. I'm not saying I'm great at this. I'm saying, like, I still, have <laughs> but I think I'm learning every day that my life is kind of like a Camino stage. You know, I know that I'm kind of wanting to get from point A to point B, but I cannot predict how that's gonna look mm -hmm. and how it's gonna actually be when I arrive at point B. And I'm just staying open to the possibility of what can be. And I think my previous life was so planned out. You know, I'm going to graduate high school. I'm going to go to university. I'm going to have a career. I'm going to get married. And I'm going to have a child. And then I'm going to go off on the sunset. <laughs> my whole life was just planned like this book. And then that book changed drastically at a point that I did not expect, you know. But I think the Camino has helped me uh, in this, what, third chapter of my life, I guess they like to call it, that I found new meaning and that I have a purpose to get up every morning. And, you know, somehow now I'm doing a Camino podcast. Like, how did this happen? You know, and I, I didn't plan that. And that's really fun for me. It's like things are just evolving. And I think the Camino gave me that. And I did not expect that. You know, I thought that I would come back from the Camino. I would, you know, teach yoga somewhere, I would, you know, go on with my life. And it that didn't happen at all. It's completely changed. But that, that's the beauty of the Camino. You know? We go to the Camino with some expectations, some thoughts, and then suddenly you go to Santiago and you have that moment, you know. The Camino doesn't end in Santiago. It really begins in Santiago. And that's where we all got like, and now what? That's the biggest issue, you know, that, that pilgrims find out. I'm like, what? I have to go into the bus. I have to go to the train. I have to go to the plane, go back to my normal life. and. It is probably the hardest moment of the Camino. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think the transition back, people don't anticipate. And, you know, I just try to encourage people when I talk to them is, you know, spend a little more time in Santiago if you can. Mm -hmm. You know, don't rush back home. 
you need some processing time because I, I know that when you come home, everybody's like, how was the trip? And, you know, they want to hear kind of like the vacation highlights. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, you're sitting there going, uh, wow, a lot more happened than just me going to Spain. <laughs> You know, this yeah. is a way, way deeper experience that I can't communicate to you through a photo or, you know, you don't even have the words for it, I think, when you first finish. And so I encourage people, if they can, if they can afford the time, uh, the expense to have some space between your Camino and coming home. And then, you know, don't feel like you have to spill everything out at once about what mm-hmm. happened. Take your time, you know, process it. And also make sure that you don't get on the rooftop preaching that everyone should go (laughs) (laughs) even though everyone should go right Um, i think everybody has to have that seed planted naturally organically the way that it should and they'll Mm -hmm. go they'll go in their time when it's time yeah, and I guess we all do that. No, you have to go to the Camino, you have to do the Camino. But I hear it so many times that at the end, really, it's just everybody that goes to the Camino come back saying the same. So I, I think people, they don't trust us anymore. I'm like, until they hear the, the calling, no, the Camino. But but then you go back from, from the beautiful Camino, and I agree with you, you have to at least take two days in Santiago. You always say, you know, if you walk the whole month, walking to Fisterre or walking to Musia is great because it goes back to this few people, a lot of time alone. A lot of thinking, a lot of uncompressing and letting things go. Because sometimes what we are right for Santiago is that the pilgrim rush, you know, everybody's so happy, everybody you're surrounded by thousands of pilgrims and it's just happy, happy, happy. And um, sometimes the Camino is not happy and sometimes you need, you know, time to let it go. And and for me it was in, in Muxia and for I know for many people they walk to Muxia to Finisterre is the time that they have to okay, now I'm ready to go home. But then in your case, you go back home and you have your, your yoga, yoga practice. And what happened with the whole you start? When is the moment that you are like, okay, maybe this Camino is going to be my new way of life. Maybe I can take what I'm doing here in the States and take it to Spain. Yeah. I think the first thing that happened was the group that I went with invited me to actually be a, a tour leader with them and teach yoga to their group. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, okay, that sounds great. And then uh, I was talking to my business partner one night um, before we were partners, we were just friends. And I was like, you know, I really, I really have in my heart that I would like to lead tours that are completely yoga related, yoga supported um, for the pilgrims. And mm-hmm. so we got to talking about that. And she's like, yeah, she goes, that sounds really cool. I would love to do that too. And so we then set up a tour business where we would take our plan, you know, is to take uh, other people that are going through times like similar to mine or other types of grief, mm-hmm. you know, grief from losing a job or, or whatever has been going on in their lives. And um, I know for me that the yoga practice was a huge support. It was good in my training, but it was also really helpful when I was actually walking. Right. So I had a whole routine that I did every single day in the morning when I woke up. Um, in the midday at lunchtime when I arrived back at the wow. day and then in the evening. And so I saw that many of the people that I was meeting along the way, like they would see my therapy, my yoga therapy balls or some of my marshmallows. <laughs> they would see me doing things. I'm like, Hey, what are you doing? And all of a sudden they wanted to borrow all my stuff. And then I was teaching little yoga sessions. And then, you know, I taught some official ones as well that were planned. I, I have to say that we tried to do yoga. I don't think that was yoga, but it was fun. And, and I agree with you that I tried to do yoga. And having someone, you know, I think every Camino family needs to have an Italian and someone that plays music yeah. and someone that knows yoga. So then yes. you have the whole Camino family complete. So when you are yeah. in St. John and start asking people, do you practice yoga? Are you Italian? Do you play the guitar? I love it. You are so right. Yes. Um, so anyway, so I, I saw the value in doing that and, you know, I really want people to take care of their bodies because Mm -hmm. you're going to have some physical challenges on the Camino. And so if you already know the tools to help take care of yourself, you're going to be able to have, um, you're going to, your walk is not going to be as consumed with physical issues and you can get more to the emotional stuff that you need to process. If you're stuck and only dealing with the physical stuff, you're going to miss out on some things for your Camino. And so Mm -hmm. I believe, strongly that if you're taking really you know great care of your body then that's going to pay off in how your camino goes so anyway so uh, we started this and we were all ready to go i had 2020 completely planned so i um 
I actually went back uh, in the winter of 2019 just to Santiago to start research and to kind of think about what more I was going to do. And then I attended some new training sessions. So I became certified in Ayurvedic yoga massage and uh, myofascial release with therapy balls. And so I did that in January and February. And then I was uh, actually in London for the Ayurvedic yoga training and was on my way to Santiago so that I could walk from Santiago to Finisterra and Lucia and um, do some more research. And then that's when COVID happened. Mm. And so, uh, so that got canceled. And then I had a Portuguese, uh, or sorry, I had a Frances uh, Camino planned with my dad that also got canceled and another one with my business partner that got canceled. So. All in all, I had three Caminos canceled in 2020. So it was quite the experience because I had planned to be away the whole year and thought, okay, you know, this is going to be my kind of gap year. And then yes. uh, we were going to take pilgrims. We had the tour set up. We were going to take pilgrims on the Frances in 2020 and fall. And of course, all of that got canceled. So, you know, that's still, so anyway, <laughs> During this past year, I've realized that I, I do still want to do the tours and I still feel very committed to my philosophy about yoga being a cross training and accompanying modality that you use while you're walking. But at the same time, I want more involvement. So now my dream has evolved and now I actually want to move there and I want to live there. And, you know, I what do I think that's going to look like right now? I'm not entirely sure, but I think that it will involve some type of yoga center. I think that, you know, I'll probably still probably, you know, do some tours with some groups, but I also wouldn't mind having kind of a retreat facility where groups would come to my place and then I would help them with the processing and also with self care with yoga and, and uh, Ayurvedic yoga massage. So I'm going to see how it all plays out. <laughs> so what does a lot of people may be thinking, you know, you go from being in the States, thinking the Camino, doing the Camino as a group, taking people into the Camino as a group leader to suddenly want to change your whole life and live in Spain and, and dedicate your time not only to that, you know, serving the pilgrims. Yes. How do you go from one point to the other? In And also during this time of COVID, you know, that everybody kind of like such a hard time. Yeah. I think that, mm, I think that for me, my work has shifted to being a vocation and that, I see it now as a way for me to pay back. You know, I, I feel like it's, I know some people probably watch this and be like, wow, but, <laughs> but this is how I feel. I, I feel like I've been training for this my whole life. Everything that I've been doing has been leading up to this. I can remember years ago um, telling my former husband that it'd be really fun to own a bed and breakfast, you know? And, you know, things like that. But I could never see how it would work in the U.S. for me because I, I don't want just people coming and staying with me one night and they're off doing their thing, right? I wanted to be a part of their experience, you know, having that dinner, um, you know, really talking about what's happening on the Camino. So anyway, I think that I've been training for this my whole life. And again, I don't know how it's going to, you know, shake out in the end i'm just being really open to what the universe is telling me i need to do and i'm being told very strongly that my purpose in life is to help pilgrims and you know i just keep asking the universe okay what keep guiding me what what is it that i'm i should be doing what's it what's it going to look like and just trying to stay open to that so i think right now this is how it looks and i'm i'm literally working right now to to move and I'm hoping to be in Spain living there by March, April of next year. So give me one second. I think my camera got frozen. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. Okay. Frozen. <laughs> Let me try to reopen this again because I'm trying a new setup. I put down the number of time. I think it's over. Yeah, maybe. Okay, now we are back. Here I am again. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> I'm trying a new thing. I was looking for a new webcam, but instead of that, I'm using the GoPro with that HDMI converter. So I have to pass it through a OBS, but yeah, try new stuff. <laughs> yeah, no worries. 
<laughs> anyway, so I, another question that I want to ask you, you know, a lot of people, and I think it's a, one of those tricky questions for the Camino right now, you know, business on the Camino. Yeah. A lot of people may think, you know, how you as a pilgrim want to make a profit out of the Camino. But I, I do believe that there's a difference between someone that lives the dream, you know, and as you say before, you know, this is your commitment. This is what you were called to do to help people. But, you know, to be able to help people, you need to find a way to also provide for yourself. So there's a big difference between the one that goes to the Camino to set up a business to be, you know, just a way of great income and a great, you know, way to do your life. But there is also those pilgrims that after doing the Camino or after knowing the Camino, they want to do something more for the Camino or they believe that the Camino can be the way of living. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, for me, look, I've been a yoga teacher. There's, there's not much money in yoga teaching. <laughs> <laughs> well, here in Spain, it's kind of like expensive right now. I used to do it every once in a while. I'm like, mm, yeah, maybe once a week it will be enough, but yeah. Well, you know, I mean, there's a, well, here's the thing. And I think people don't understand is, you know, I owned a yoga studio uh, for several years and, you know, it costs a lot of money to run a studio. It, you mm -hmm. have your rent. I mean, it's just like any business, right? You, you have your rent, you've got to pay your teachers and you've got insurance and you've got a lot of costs. And at the end of the day, what's left over is very little. Uh, it's not like you're running a studio and rolling in the in the money, even though maybe a class costs fifteen or twenty dollars. By the time you yeah. have your expenses, you have very little left over. Yeah, and that's one of the things that I want to also point out for the people. You know, here there's a big discussion. You know, albergues at Donativo, albergues that they are run by people. I'm like the people that run albergues that they are, you know, in a professional way. They have to pay the taxes. They have to pay their their autonomous. Right now, we are paying autonomous about three hundred euros a month. Yeah. Plus, as you say, insurance and everything, something that some old albergues at the Adonativo, you know, so in a way. So don't make, you know, a case for all the general because there's a lot of people that run albergues as a business that they are surviving. As you say, you know, the building may pay 12, 12, 15 euros, but at the end, what is left for the hospitalero and, and their families is nothing. So, exactly. and now it looks like the the new rules in Spain that we're saying today the, for, you know, for freelancers that if you have to make, if you make between, you know, 20, if you want to make a profit for 20,000 a year, you have to make 50,000. So more than half of whatever your income goes into taxes. Right, right. So yeah. it is hard, yeah. Yeah, it's very hard. And so I think, you know, I, I'm used to having that challenge on the yoga side because people be like, how come a yoga class costs $20? You should be doing it for free. <laughs> like, okay, well, hold on. I, I have gone to an extensive amount of training in order mm -hmm. to be able to teach yoga. It would take years for all of that to be paid off for what's required uh, certification wise. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but I get it, you know, and I think people sometimes forget, you know, and I think the world, you know, we all run on what I guess I would call an energy, um, what, what would you say, an energy exchange, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we don't go to a restaurant and expect to eat for free. Yeah. You know, we, you know, but by going to a restaurant and paying for our meal enables the people that own that restaurant to express their creativity, to have meaning in their life. And I think we're all here to help each other have meaning in life. You know, and I think sometimes it's really easy to go, oh, somebody's trying to commercialize the Camino or they're trying to make profit off the Camino. And I guess I would challenge them and say, OK, um, I think. Let's think about this. Are you saying that you don't want to be able to have a cafe to stop at and have your second pilgrim breakfast? Because if those people aren't there with that cafe, you there have to be yeah, any Camino. Right. If um, are you saying that you like, let's say all of a sudden you something happens to your rain poncho and you need a new one and you get into this next town and there are no shops, you're going to be the first person to complain. You know, so I feel like. You know, sometimes people are talking out of both sides of their mouth on that. And I get it. You know, we all be judgmental and have opinions. We all do that, right? But mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, I think pilgrims want support along the Camino route. We want somewhere to sleep. We want somewhere to be able to buy the things that we need. And, you know, sometimes it's fun to buy a little trinket, a little souvenir too, right? Um, it's fun to stop for the second pilgrim breakfast. It's fun to... You know, if there aren't those cafes, if those people aren't putting themselves out there and, you know, let's face it, I, I, I think that somebody who's only who's opening a cafe along the Camino routes 
isn't in it purely for the money, right? Yeah. If, if they're in it for just the money, then maybe they're going to go open something maybe in Madrid or somewhere. You know, but if you're opening along the Frances or one of the other Camino routes, I think you pretty much know that this is going to be a business where if I meet my costs, I have a little bit left over at the end of the day to support me and my family and to live, you know, a good life, then that's that's enough, right? And I think we all want that support along the Camino. So I hope that when people are judging people who want to uh, lead tours or do different things, again, it's like, hey guys, let's step back and look at this from the whole perspective. Yeah, you can criticize somebody who wants to lead a yoga tour on the on the Camino. I get that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I know that there are people that want to go on Camino in that fashion. And I think that's okay that they want to do it that way. It's their Camino. It's not yours. It's not somebody else's. It's theirs. And if people are interested in doing that sort of thing, then great. I think it's great that we have people that are supporting them and providing that opportunity. And if nobody wants it, then, you know, that that thing won't exist. That's the thing. I, I agree totally with you. It's like, you know, talking about, you know, carrying your backpack or having, you know, someone carry your backpack, going to a hotel, going to an albergue, going to a hostel. And like, it does all of those that are also because it allows different people to go to the Camino with that, as you say, if there weren't, you know, enough place. And of course, there's, there's a limit here and there, but most of the people that are there, you know, and right now we can tell that the ones that they're surviving, they're fighting and yeah. ask them, you know, ask them why they set up a business in the Camino. It may surprise you the stories that a lot of the, the hospitaleros and the bars they have behind because some of the people that are like you, I'm like, they walk the Camino and suddenly they fell in love and now they are there to provide for other pilgrims. And at the end, the, the euro and a half that they charge you for the coffee and sharing your story, hearing you and helping you is much more than than just that, that coffee. No? And without those, there wouldn't be a Camino. Exactly, exactly. So I, I'm so grateful for everyone that supports the pilgrims along the Camino. And, mm -hmm. you know, you and I've talked a, a lot offline about, you know, how much compassion we both have for the people that are running, you know, small albergues right now that haven't had a pilgrim stay in over a year and a half. And I'm very concerned. I want those really small albergues, you know, the, the people that you were talking about that are doing it for the love of the pilgrims. I want them to be there when I get back there. And um, I think the community is full of that. And I think if people just really step back when they're getting ready to judge on something, if they really think mm -hmm. about it, uh, they will see the bigger picture and that people, people are working on the Camino because they have their heart is in it. It's not a money thing. I agree. And and I think it's a time, you know, for pilgrims to, to hear the call and being able to help. And the Camino prices may go up because also the albergues are, you know, slowing down and mm -hmm. they've been they need more stuff for clean, more less beds and everything. So we need to be open and, and less judging. But I think that when pilgrims come out to the Camino, they're all to support and we have to remember that with no bars, with no albergues, there wouldn't be the Camino as it is right now. And I will go to the first Camino where you sleep, you know, in a church and on anywhere, but really that's the Camino that we want. And I guess that's the question that we have to ask ourselves right now. What is the Camino that we want for the following years? Exactly. I think that's a great question that we all need to really be thinking about. And, you know, one of the things I, I was interviewing someone recently, we had a conversation about when you finish walking the Camino, I think that a lot of us, you know, how you have that initial seed planted, mm -hmm. to walk, you know, I think after you've walked, there's a new seed planted. And it's like, you know, there have been millions of pilgrims before you and I ever stepped foot on a Camino that paved the way for us. And now it's our turn to continue to pave the way for future pilgrims. And, you know, I could spend my life just going back and walking all the different routes, which, you know, I hope to do several more routes. Mm -hmm. But I feel now after walking that I now have a new calling that it's now my turn to help pave the way for other pilgrims so that they can receive the gifts of the Camino as well. And I think if, if everybody that walks kind of comes back with that feeling, I think that we, that the Camino will evolve into being something even more magnificent beyond our yes. life. You know, like we might not see it necessarily, but I think it's mm -hmm. going to be a more powerful. I mean, when you think of all the prayers that have been said along that path, all of the hopes and dreams and, heartache and everything that's been left there um, that's paved the way so that you and I could go and receive what we needed from it. And now it's our turn to continue to provide that for others. 
And I think that's what you're doing through the work that you're doing at Camino People, right? You are helping albergue owners. You are helping inspire other people to go. I, you know, I think you're paying it back. Mm -hmm. That's the whole idea, you know, trying to make a living and trying to do what you love. But as you said, you know, I asked myself, what is, you know, we have the great people of the Camino, you know, first of all, Santiago that walk it and, then we have Elias that planted the yellow arrows because so many people don't even know that there was a community with their arrows at the beginning. And then we have the great generation of the people that helped those arrows. You know, we have a lot of Pombo, all those people that, that set up the Camino like it is right now. But there is a new generation that is, you know, our group that we are right now here that is like, what is the next Camino challenge? Yes. What do we have to do for the Camino? Yes. Because the, 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 the arrows, they're already painted. The, the roads are already marked, but what is the next stages for the Camino? And that's, I think, the question that everyone needs to ask themselves. And, you know, what can I do yeah. to make that possible? Yeah, the Camino was there long before us, and it's going to be there long after us. And we have this opportunity to leave it better for future generations that want to walk. And I think that's when you really look at your, I think when you start looking at it this way, your work moves from work to being a vocation, that it's about that energy exchange, that you're working, yes, for self-fulfillment so that you have a meaning to get out of bed every mm -hmm. day, but that meaning is paying back to the Camino and to, to future pilgrims. Yeah, what is what can be better than life than, than living out of what you want and also giving back to the people? I'm like, it's so selfish because at the end, I'm like, I'm trying to live my life to something that I love, but at the same time, you're giving love to so many others so they can do the same and have the same process as you. So it's the whole four cycle, you know, this is karma and call it whatever you want, but that's that's the beauty of the Camino. No? We receive it from, some, from others and then we have to give it back. Yes. And we're so fortunate, I think, to find something. You know, I think people their whole lives search for something to have passion about. And I think the Camino really touches us and we become very passionate about it and that's what mm -hmm. that, that vocation and it's a beautiful thing it is indeed so tell us more let's go more into business like how is the process i'm like a lot of people ask me since we talked the last time you are trying to move to spain yes. how does one from out of spain start thinking that i'm moving to spain because i start thinking with a visa you can only stay for three months how do you own a house can you own a house why can i have you know your coaching, for example, your yoga certificates, are they, you know, can you teach yoga in Spain? Do you have to register? How does it work? Yeah, well, I'm just starting on that path. So um, I'm actually taking a class. Uh, I'm, I'm in this master class with James Blick of uh, Madrid Revealed. And uh, he's offering a class called, um, it's a master class on moving to Spain. Really? And so yeah. There's such, such a thing as moving class to move it to Spain. Yeah, so I just started it and it's fantastic. Uh, James, he runs a company with his wife Yoli um, in Madrid and they usually do things about um, food and tours all around Madrid and around Spain. And then during COVID, of course, like everybody, they've had to pivot a little mm -hmm. bit. And so this is one of the new things that they're working on. And so I'm in kind of the test group for it. <laughs> so there's 20 us and um, we're all working on figuring out how to move to Spain so they I'm blown away by the first week it's been amazing but anyway yeah it's gonna be quite the process you know I have to apply for a visa I have to figure out which visa I'm going to choose how all that's going to work and it's a huge commitment and very complex it's not going to be I wouldn't say that it's hard but there's going to be a lot of steps and hoops you know that i'm going yeah. to, have to jump through and and that's one of the reasons i'm saying i'm remaining very open you know i may very well come to spain in the first year not be able to do business you know i may just be figuring mm -hmm. out exactly what town i want to live in what i want things to look like in the end and you know my first year may just be all volunteer and you know i don't know my whole life might just be volunteering there i haven't decided mm -hmm. um so I've got, a, I've got a lot of things I got to figure out, but uh, my plan is that I would apply for my visa at, in October so that I would be able to, you know, begin my move beginning of the year. Lightly think about, and, and there's a lot to it. You know, do I rent when I first arrive? Do I buy when I first arrive? What city do I want to live in? What route do I want to live on? And so I've got, I've got a lot to figure out and, you know, right now, I think my dream is living um, 
probably in Santiago or maybe Finisterre Mushia, um, because I'm very much interested in helping people with the end process. Mm -hmm. uh, having, I kind of envision um, a retreat center that would support them in that. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Check, check back with me in a few months. I'll, I'll know more. But, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have to check with you more often, yeah. yeah. So what is your the first step? I'm like, when you start with this huge trip for the people that they're like, okay, I have kind of like the same vibe. I'm feeling, I want to go to Spain, but probably people around you, they will like, you're crazy, you're nuts. One thing is your Camino, another thing is changing your life to Spain. You don't speak the language. I'm like, what are you going to do over there after COVID? So what is the first step to on all of this? Making the move? Yeah. Uh, the first step is educating yourself about how to do it, right? Because first off, as you mentioned earlier, you know, right now we can only visit for 90 days every six months. So you've got to figure out a lot of stuff where you currently live so that you're yeah. not time while you're in Spain, because when you're in Spain, you're going to have to be house searching and whatnot. So uh, the way that I'm looking at it right now is doing all of the research that I need to do for the visa. And so the next step, once I have all my documents pulled together, I will apply at the consulate. And once that's approved, then um, actually decide where I'm going to live. And so my plan right now, as long as uh, U.S. citizens are allowed to visit Spain in September, I'll become walking the Frances. And then after the Frances, I'll be determining which city I'm going to first live in and picking out which first house or apartment I'm going to be in. And so I'm kind of seeing it, you know, of course, I think every pilgrim probably sees that for sale sign on an old albergue <laughs> stone house and they're like, oh, I want to live in an albergue, right? But yeah, you know, I think I want to do that, Jose. But I, also at the same time, um, while I've been interviewing, I've been making so many friends that own albergues actually in Spain. And so I hope to go and work with them. I hope to spend some time volunteering mm -hmm. in places to make sure that this is what I want, right? Yeah, that's one of the things that is dangerous from the Camino, that we have that beautiful moment of the Camino and we don't know that, you know, working on the albergues industry is tough. You have, you have to work all day, every year. You don't have any time because mostly they don't have, you know, employees or at least in the, the albergue that we think. And it's tough. So I suggest everyone before you jump into a conclusion because a lot of people also run an albergue for a year and then they're done. I'm like, you will be surprised how many people try to live that life and it's not for everyone. Walking the Camino is one thing, owning an albergue is another one. So you have to be, if you really want to have that hospital little life and, and knowing that your weekends are not going to be your weekends, that you're going to have time. So as you said before, try to be maybe an hospitalero, you know, in the Osbol, hospitalero voluntario, or maybe if you have a friend, go work with them for a couple of days and let them go on holiday. But yes. I will suggest go try out first before you do any big decisions. Exactly. You know, like I said, I'm, I'm a person that jumps in. So my jumping in is moving to Spain. But mm. once I'm there, then I'm going to, I like to build things slowly. You know, I like to start small so that you can make those pivots as you need to. Yeah. Right. And so if I spend my first year volunteering and teaching yoga here or there or helping out friends, running their albergues and giving them those little holidays that they need, mm -hmm. Then that just gives me the research that I need to say, okay, this is what I want to do. This is how it's going to start looking. So I think that's a better position to be in than to come to Spain and go, I'm going to buy, you know, an albergue, I'm going to have 18 beds and, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then get there and be like, oh my God, I didn't realize this was going to be a 14 hour day, no days off. And then, um, you know, end up closing and you know moving back home with your tail between your legs and you know i don't want to do that you know i i instead want to jump in and then kind of test things out and you know because when i make a decision i'm really committed to it mm -hmm. and um so that's why i say i i think the camino has kind of shown me that yeah, you can plan out that you're going to walk a certain stage and you're going to wake up in the morning and you know you're going from point A to point B, but you have no idea how it's going to look. It might rain. You might all of a sudden have a leg issue. You, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's all kinds of things that can come up. And um, if you're open to it, also some really amazing things can open. But if you have your head down, like, like I, you've probably read some Camino books, right, where somebody mm -hmm. just has their head down, man, and they're racing from point A to point B and they're missing, they're missing so much. 
And so I want to have my head up looking around and saying, okay, here's, here's what I could do. This might, this might be fun. Maybe I'll try that. And, mm-hmm. um, or maybe I'm better suited at doing a certain thing, you know, and I, I don't know what all those things are quite yet, but I'll figure it out. Yeah. I agree with you. I think it's great to have a plan, you know, but I, that the best example that I can get, you know, I never have always travel planning, but the Camino suddenly I decided not to plan, but every day we'll say, you know, today we're walking from here to here, but then suddenly that day you met a wonderful group of pilgrims for some ways that are like, oh, we're staying here yeah. and we're supposed to keep going. And then you decide to stay there because they are fun and they have a pool and you start having drinks and it's like, why not? So it's not bad to have a plan, but you have to be open. And I think that's the best way to take the Camino. You can plan, but be open to changes because changes happen and sometimes they're for the better. Yes, I agree. I agree. And there's nothing more frustrating to be to having to leave a group because you already have a place mm-hmm. where it's great. And, you know, we, our lives are short and I think we, we need to make the most of each day that we have. Totally agree. And now more than ever, I'm like, since, you know, with this new sentence of more than ever, but it's really now we know after this what is really meaningful and the very important things and something that we give us granted as walking the Camino Santiago whenever we want finally was taken away from us. And it's like, if this can happen, anything can happen. We never believe, you know, this was something from the movies and the, the really bad sci-fi movies. And suddenly we, it's been two years without Camino, it's been two years standing in our houses and it seems like it was yesterday. They have taken two years away of our lives, but here we are back stronger and I believe that, you know, for the better. So. Oh, oh, you're so right. I, I've thought a lot about that a lot this past year is that, you know, we've been so privileged and we've been, you know, I, I was able to travel all the time, you know, and, and do whatever I wanted. And this was the first time in my life where I feel like, nope, you're staying home. Mm-hmm. And I felt like freedoms were taken. And um, again, I'm not, you know, I'm going to say COVID has been very serious and very it's been very, very hard for people. And, you know, I, I, I want to make sure that everybody's watching this knows that we realize that people have lost people that have meant mm-hmm. so much to them. Um, there have been, there has been great loss in so many ways during this past year. And I think that now, hopefully all of us, it's not that we took things like this for granted, I guess, maybe we did, but I think now the Camino is going to be even more special. I think now people won't take, for granted that they can travel. Now I think we're all going to see again that this is this is not our right. It's a gift to be able to travel. Mm-hmm. It's a gift to be welcomed back into a country. It is not your right. You know, it's they don't have to let you in. Yeah. And I think hopefully this will open everyone's eyes up to seeing all these things as a gift and um, respecting it more and appreciating appreciating when you get to go visit a, a little town anywhere that's a privilege and a gift for all of us so i i hate that we've had to go through this time and i i wish that no one had lost their life during this i i wish that no one had lost their income and, and the mm-hmm. things that have you know the bad things that have happened but now i think it's all it's up to all of us to say okay what have what can we take and learn from this? And now how can we make things better as we re-enter the world? Yeah, totally agree. I think it's, it's so true. And finally, you know, it's the time that we have to say to ourselves, all of those little things is like, I, I can only think of one one thing, you know, the, the sharing a meal in an albergue with many people from other countries without, you know, mask, without nothing, and finally being able to hack someone and, and giving you know, that energy that have the hacks. There's something the magical in the Camino with hugging someone that you don't know. And I can wait till the day that we finally can go back and say, you know, because that's the beauty of the Camino. It doesn't matter where you came from, doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter religion, anything. Yes. We're all pilgrims searching and, and that's the beauty of it. Right. I, you know, obviously I will respect whatever rules are in place mm-hmm. um, when we have, when I do walk again, but I look so forward to the day when I can hug a, another pilgrim, when I can see someone's whole face, you know. <laughs> I, I've been so sad this past year thinking about how this could impact the Camino, you know, like the communal meals are so special, so important. Yeah. Um, the stops at the cafes, and I, I really hope that we can get back to people not being afraid to be around people that, you know, we can 
um, go back to feeling comfortable and hugging someone. I, I think we all need that. Human touch is so important. I mean, there've been so many studies done where when mm -hmm. little kids don't get their human touch when they're first born, uh, the damage that it can cause long-term. And I think many of us have gone through that this past year and a half where we have not had interactions with our family, with friends. Um, yeah. you know, there, are, there are many people out in this world right now that haven't had a human hug or a human touch for over a year and a half. And I, I hope that we can get back to that when it's safe for everybody. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really good to point out, you know, that every, everyone is going to have their own timing and for some, some people it's made on one, two, some people will be open to, and I think now's the time that we need to respect each one's feelings, you know, but as you say, the rules are going to be the rules. So for now in Spain, there's some rules that we all have to follow. Right. I'm not going to go into the right, the wrong, but the rules are there to, to protect people. And once things are open, we need to give everyone a space to, to go back to what was normal and I believe to what is better now because we need to go to a new better Camino and everyone is going to take their own time so just walk and give them time and I guess the Camino will become what we'll want to be yes agreed anyway like what is you're going to be your your next Camino when are you so will you know that we are you are coming for the French are you planning everything or is just yes I know that I'm going to be in Saint Jean and walk it yeah, you know, I mean, I'm just going to keep watching what everyone's saying. I'll probably, you know, give a call to you before I set out, you know, to say, should I be booking out maybe two or three days just because of what's happened? You know, I know that mm -hmm. um, I think I was listening to your podcast the other day that, you know, just to give the albergue owners a heads up because there's certain yeah. cleaning and different things that have to be done. And of course, I I want to be respectful if they're serving meals. You don't want them over buying food. And so I think mm -hmm. it's good a heads up that you're coming so I'll, I'll be looking for guidance from you and from other friends in spain on you know what's the best way to do that so you know i'll listen to you guys on that but as far as um after my frances i hope to uh my dad i was supposed to take my dad last year uh so he and i are hoping in spring of 2022 we'll be walking the portuguese route um probably going from porto i think um and so I'm doing that one and then hoping I have several people that want to go on tour uh, come spring. So I got to figure out all those details if, if in fact I can even do that this coming year, uh, since my first priority, of course, is mm -hmm. moving. Um, and then I want to do a person. I want to do a couple of personal ones just on my own. I want to do the Camino Inglés. Um, I'm just really feeling that. I want to do the spiritual var variant if my dad and I aren't able to do that one. We do that the one. Yeah, if you do the Portuguese, you have to do the coastal and the variante espiritual because it's yeah. for me it's one of my favorites so far. Yeah, I uh, just interviewed someone that wrote a book about it, and I'm so intrigued by it. So I want to do that. I want to do the Finisterre. I, you know, I want to do them all. I don't have <laughs> the time to do all the routes I want to do because, again, I think my first calling is to one come and help other pilgrims, and you know. Um, it's very important for me to do this one with my dad and mm -hmm. um, I'm really sad that we didn't get to do it last year and I, I pray that he and I get to do it this next spring. I'm, I'm sure you will be able. So anyway, thank you so much for your time. I want to remind everyone that, you know, go check out the Camino Cafe and subscribe to our channels because at the end, you know, the more people that discover the Camino, the more joyful maybe you will change your life. and move to Spain like you are going to do, or maybe you will start. But at the end, the whole idea is just to encourage everyone to take that step forward and discover the Camino because it's, it's truly a joy and it's something that, you know, sometimes in Spain for us, it's something that we take for granted. And I have friends, you know, that they haven't walked it ever. And it's like, it's there. I will do it one day. Yeah. You never know what's going to happen. And we know that now. So thank you so much for your time. I hope that we can see each other pretty soon. And, you know, if ask everyone if you need any help and you need whatever, you have us both for us about the Camino. So I will always say, Buen Camino, Ultrella. Uh, buen Camino. <laughs>